In this video, I want to talk about when do you think is the best time for you to transition and invest in the stock market? These are for people who have investments already but want to diversify, learn the rudiments of the stock market and they think it's too complicated, too hard to understand. If you want to know if it's your time to invest in stocks, check this video out. Hi everyone, this is Marvin Germo and if you're new to this channel, super appreciate it if you could subscribe. You could hit the bell so you get updated every time I create videos like this. And the whole goal of this channel is really to create a framework that you can be financially free, that wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, investing is for you. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe, like, and stay till the end of the video. Hey guys, so in this video, I want to answer a question that Marie sent out. Please remember, you guys can send me questions by, via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or in the comment section in YouTube, or wherever avenue where you think I can read it. No, Just send me your questions and I'll try to answer it as well. So this is a question that was sent out by Marie. I'll try to read it, then I'll answer it throughout this video as well. So she was saying, also, Sir Germo, question lang po. No need to answer naman po if you if wala na po kayong time. You've mentioned po in one of your videos that you first started uh, out with mutual funds and VULs when you were new to investing, which is very, very true. Uh, for those who have not watched my older videos, I said what led me to the stock market was me investing first in uh, equity and balance funds. That gave me a good entry point to get my feet wet. And before I continue with the question, please remember that for you to start investments, it's nice to get your your feet wet as well, especially if you are not accustomed to investing yet. Wag nyo bibigla in sarili nyo. Create those small steps. Create those baby steps that will lead you and take you to the right direction. A lot of people always, when they get inspired by, by, by a video, they put a large amount of money in the stock market for the first time or when they get inspired when I feature a lot of entrepreneurs here, they want to start their own business quickly, quit their job and start going in it in one go. That's, that's all good. However, the best way for you to actually do it is to start small and I've been saying this over and over in a lot of my videos that if you're faithful with little, you will be faithful with much. I repeat, if you are faithful with little with whatever amount that you have right now you will be faithful with much so meaning start small do those baby steps and for me that baby step those baby steps were uh, investing in mutual funds investing in balance funds investing equity in equity funds and to be honest also I didn't even know that I would invest in the stock market it wasn't it wasn't in my battle plan it wasn't something that I I sought of or it was something that I didn't really uh, was looking after uh, when I was starting out. I just really wanted to try and have and dabble into it and I just really fell in love with it. But let's continue the questions. Uh, the, the message. What made you choose to trade for rather than just keep on investing aside from you watching your stocks daily, some mutual funds? That's a good question. And what made me want to trade more? When I started out also, please get this. Investing, going into the stock market doesn't specifically mean that you will trade automatically. In being in the stock market, because you can also be an investor. You can be a long-term investor buying growth stocks that you know over 5-10 years will do very, very well. Or you can be a dividend investor buying companies that give you good dividends, but their stock price is also growing. It's just like buying a condo with rental income that you're raising rent every time and the value of where you uh, bought the property increases over a long period of time. So I started out as a mutual fund investor but I went into the stock market not really to trade also I wanted to invest my, my first influences were literally Warren Buffett I would read all of his ideologies I would also uh, read up on Buffettology then I would go put to his mentor Benjamin Graham Medro, a hard read no? if you'd like to read on Benjamin Graham his books his philosophies uh, they're a bit harder to read they're a bit harder to understand but if you can uh, push through and go through all of the parang old English that they would use and the terminologies also that you would get a lot you would get a lot of insights from it but uh, aside from she mentioned here that and I mentioned this in the videos because that one of the reasons why I went into the stock market was I was watching my uh, mutual funds every day so the, the most logical step for me was hmm if I'm watching my mutual funds every day then why not also uh, invest in the stock market why not also try it and double into it into it as well so aside from that I guess one of the things that I one of my reasons was since I'm watching it hmm uh, and 
why not also try it? I've, I've said this in a lot of the videos that I like trying different things. I like trying different investments. I like doing things that I, I have not done before. I like to challenge myself. I like to learn a new skill. And as if there's one thing that I'd like to point out to a lot of people is investing in the stock market is always skills-based. It's always the amount of money that you earn is proportional to the amount of skill sets that you have. The amount of uh, return that you will get also is proportional to how much effort you put into it. It's not something that... Uh, lagay ko na lang bahala na kung kumita hope hoping that you will make a lot of money please remember this hope is amazing hope is a good thing but hope is not a strategy hope is not something that will cause you is to buy something or sell something as well there has to be something that's bigger than it there has to be something that that when everyone else is not buying but because based on your strategy it's telling you to buy that's when you start buying so i i wanted to start before because i just wanted to see if it was something that was for me or not and if for example no if it went the other direction that when i did it hindi ko na gusto Hindi ako masaya doon. Uh, the returns that I wanted were not there also, I would have stopped and I would have done something else. That's why I've been saying this in a lot of the videos also that you try everything and as you start trying all of those things, you figure out, hmm, I think I'm better doing my own business versus uh, trading the forex market. I think I'm better investing in real estate than investing in the stock market because it's never a one-size-fits-all strategy. You just have to find something that will work for you. So if you're asking me what was my mentality at that time, Marie, uh, yun lang. Uh, I just really wanted to. I just really wanted to try it. I just really wanted to see if it was me or for me or not. And I did not start with a very very large amount of money. I just scaled it eventually. When when I saw it, it was doing well. I added more. When I saw it was doing well, my bonuses I put it there. When I saw it was doing well, the extra f sources of cash that I had, I also put it there. So you can do it also. Start small, then you just scale it up. Once you see you like it, once you see it's something that makes you feel alive, once you see that your skill is there, once you see also that hey, this is something that I think. I can do for a very very long time anyways let's continue uh, like did you know that you were potentially going to get more returns when you learn the rules of trading and worth it po by mga potential losses mo for learning and gains in the future hmm, that's very very good uh, at that time no did I know uh, did I know that it would do better of course you wouldn't know until the results actually come in but that's why I keep telling people this. And please remember, when I invested in the stock market, I never withdrew my funds uh, in mutual funds. They were also there as well. The only way for me or, or for you also to know if it's something that's that will work is to actually try both. And then you can test it over a course of, say, three years, five years to see what is better for you. So at that time, there was a lot of fear, you know, because when I started, the global crash was there. The, the, the global recession was there. You would see stocks drop around 50 plus percent. I, I didn't, I didn't think about that it's nice to look at it now that hey it's up massively from where it was before but uh, at that time <laughs> that wasn't my that wasn't my frame of mind eh. uh, I, I I think different from other people that when when they see something else is doing well they withdraw their money I don't withdraw my money I still treat my mutual funds or other investments as assets and assets are there to help you make money when you cannot make money for yourself anymore so what I did was I did not withdraw my money from those other funds but what I did was when I had new sources of cash when I knew when I had uh, fresh funds I invested that more in the stock market so anyway the biggest mistake of a lot of people is they withdraw their money and when they withdraw their money the biggest chance that's happening is uh, they spend it so ganun eh, may, may risk din kasi that if you withdraw your money baka hindi mo siya invest and even now, I'll give you an example. I, I invested in an IMA, and IMA is like a bank product that gives you a higher rate of return. But suddenly, over the past few uh, months, nakita ko yung return ng IMA has dropped down. So what I did was, I withdrew, not everything, but I withdrew a portion of it. Then I wanted to reinvest it in another company that was, was giving me a higher interest. However, because of me being busy, it's been a month already, hindi ko pa na transfer that. I was able to transfer a small portion, uh, not a small portion, but some portions of it, but not everything yet. So, yun yung risk also. Every time you try to remove it, may times na baka hindi, hindi siya efficiently na nakalagay doon. Huwag kayo mang hinayang doon because at the end of the day, they're still gonna work hard for you. The main name of the game here is, especially if you're starting out, Marie, uh, build up cash. Build up cash flow so that what, once that cash flow is building up, you can get more from that and you can reinvest that in other assets for you as well. Next, part of her question is this. Uh, 
Worth it po ba yung mga potential losses mo for learning and gains in the future? Uh, yes, of course. Not just potential losses, no? Uh, real losses as well. Losses like that, mistakes like that, are things that will help you grow, eh. Mistakes like that are things that will help you uh, be a better trader, be a better investor. And I guess it's part of my DNA. I'm not scared to fail. A lot of us, we're hardwired not to fail, eh. And because we're hardwired not to fail, we... Uh, we don't take risk. We don't take this business. We don't take this investments. Me, I take a different approach. I'm okay with failing, but I only try to expose myself to an amount that if it goes to zero, if I make a mistake, it won't shatter my dreams. It, it won't make me lose sleep. That I can still function very, very well. This is just, this has been my rule of thumb in investing ever since, and I keep saying this all the time because a lot of people make this mistake. Is I only put money that. I don't plan to touch for a very, very long time. Even if it disappears, even if it goes to zero, I'm totally okay with it. And that's my whole intent on investing. And if, and to make it closer to home, the market right now is dropping, not just in the Philippines, but globally. Uh, that's been the underlying theme. And it could drop massively, but I'm not going to be scared. Though. Why won't I be scared? Because again, that's money that I don't plan to touch for a very, very long time. That's money that's an excess of everything that I have. And even, please remember this, uh, even when I was starting out, that was still my mentality. It always has to fall and predicate on what you're investing is money that you don't plan to touch for a very, very long period of time. So every time you get burned, every time you get hurt, every time uh, bad things happen, either in business or in school or in work, it allows you to learn off of it. It makes it becomes a lesson to springboard and make you a better uh, individual, a better business person, a better investor as well. So don't be scared of mistakes because mistakes are part I, I, I believe part of the game it's not something that you intentionally ah magkakamali ako gusto ko magkamali no naman but when it happens please remember mistakes should not define who you are mistakes should not define uh, how you live your life because when you fall you don't fall down you fall forward you use that to propel you to go higher anyways what did you have to do to prepare po ahead of time since you are actually started to decide on trading like budget wise and such sorry po sa barrage of questions Mr. Hermo, I'm still starting out kasi and all, I have VUS and MF po. They say nga po to diversify but I'm not quite sure which other options to take. Thank you Sir Germo and again po, no need po to talaga to answer. Just wanted to learn po from your insights. Thank you so much Sir. What did I do? Yon. it goes back to what I said. Cash is always king. Cash is always king. I always knew, number one, how much I spent per month. As long as what I spent would spend on a regular basis is covered, everything else uh, will I could use for investing. And balik tada ko, no, I would prioritize investing first than buying my luho. So I would cover my basis, the things that I would need to operate normally, especially when I was employed. Then when I start, when I quit my job, I had to create a large buffer of cash that, hey, if no money comes in over the next few years, how, how many years will I last? Then how much investments do I have also that if nothing really comes in, how many, if I liquidate all of my investments, how, how many years will I last? So if you add that, plus that, plus that, and it's a very, very large buffer, uh, then you're supposed to be okay. Because please remember this, if you are uh, in Tagalog, Masipag, never yan mag zero. It will never come to a point that no, no money will come in because this is what I really believe. Those who know how to work hard will always win. Eh? But if you know how to work hard, plus work smart, plus leverage, plus save, plus invest, plus know what season you are in in life, that you are in the season where you're starting building, accumulating, and you're not spending as much, you will always win. But it's also nice to be responsible that you just don't jump the gun. Hey, forever now, I'm not gonna do my job anymore. I'm just gonna invest forever. But you don't have any savings. You don't have any buffer. That's purely irresponsible. So my style is basically this. I knew what my break-even point per year is so that I knew how much would I need to get per year for me to be able to have operations for the next year. But above and beyond that, I knew already how much savings I would need for X amount of years so that if nothing good will happen, I will still survive as well. And for me, that's the most important thing that I I live to up to this day that in spite of me having investments that also give me passive income, that give me a return, I still know that cash is king. Eh? I still know that it's so important for me to store cash first above everything else that I'm doing. It's so important for me to prioritize putting a degree of cash above and beyond my investment. So th there's been a there's been a lot of talk that you have to invest everything because sayang matatalo ka ng inflation. That's true also. But if you already have investments working massively hard for you, 
it doesn't hurt to have cash. And I'll tell you this, you talk to all of the rich people, when I say rich people, they're the point zero 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 one percent of the population, they're the multi-billionaires, not just in peso, they're billionaires in dollars. Uh, they have a large amount of cash. Eh? They have investments, they have businesses, they're taking a lot of risk also, but they have a large amount of cash because cash is always king. Eh? And that's very, 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 very important in the grand scheme of things. So. So there, I hope I answered your question. I hope that this is something that added uh, value to all of you. And just to finish off based on what you said last about diversification, of course, um, that's why at the start, invest as much as you can and try out everything so that you know what works for you, what's better for you, where your skill is at. Then if you want to diversify, you diversify not just for the sake of, I'm diversified, I have a lot of investments. Don't do that. You diversify because you want a hedge, meaning if the market will drop, will crash tomorrow, massively 50%, you have other investments that will uh, hold the score, keep the slack, protect you, that they won't drop as much, or they could also give you cash flow, or they could also protect you. So don't diversify just for the sake of diversification. Diversify because it's part of your plan. Diversify because what you're buying is unrelated, something that will hedge and protect you. And even Warren Buffett would say this, eh, over diversification is not really good because it won't really protect you as much. It does not make sense putting a large amount of money into an asset that you know it's not as good but you're just putting money into it because you just want to be diversified. Don't do that. You put in more money still on what you know you're good at, what you know will have growth over a long period of time. Then just to protect yourself, you also have a certain allocation that's contrary to that. So example, I made a video off of this stock market versus gold. So gold moves contrary to the stock market. When the stock market is good, gold is bad. When uh, the stock market is bad, the economy is bad, gold is doing well as well. So something like that. Or if you have a business, uh, one thing that you can do is basically this. If, for example, you have a business that is connected to load, meaning you're selling, uh, I don't know if, load, if people still sell loads, but if you have something connected to smart or talk and text or globe, then it might be prudent also to invest in stocks with them, but you also diversify and buy other stocks that are unrelated to them so that, for example, that doesn't do too well anymore and puro, puro telco stocks din hawak mo, then your entire business plus your investments will be affected. But if you have, say, you have a property development company, of course, property development and telco don't are not really related to each other already, then you somehow have an hedge. So that's what I'm saying about diversification. You diversify just to protect your core assets. But it's not, you don't diversify just because you need to diversify. So I hope you got a lot from this, Marie. And if you are someone also who who have has a couple of questions, send them in. I'll try to answer them, especially if it's interesting questions like this that I know a lot of you guys will benefit as well. I'll make videos off of that. So comment them below if you learned a lot from this video or put hashtag uh, ask Marvin and put in your question so that I know it's something that you want me to create a video from. Put them in the comment section below. And... I guess that's it, but um, I, I like to give this time also for those who want to learn more about everything that, that I'm talking about in the stock market. Uh, number one, I have books that I talk about the basics of stocks, I talk about how you time, how to, when's the best time to buy stocks, when's the best time to sell, how can you find a good stock, how can you find a bad stock. I have books available, they're in the description below. You can order them via Shopee and they will be sent wherever you are in the Philippines as well. There's a link below that naman where if you are abroad or you are from areas where Shopee does not deliver to, uh, that link can you can order there and we will send it to you wherever you are in the world as well. And for those who want to learn from uh, all of my training classes, I have training classes in different areas around the world. Uh, this March, we have a session in Makati, or sorry, in Bonifacio Global City for Stock Smarts Manila. Then April, London, May, Singapore, and Doha, Qatar, June we're having uh, June we're having Auckland, New Zealand, July we're having Sydney, Australia, then in November we're having Dubai and Tokyo as well. And lastly, I have online sessions, online courses with Chinky Tan and Shansi. It's called Stock Market for Everyone and Make Money, Grow Money, where we talk about the rudiments of how you can invest in the stock market and how you can have your own business. All of them below, all of the details are in the links below as well. So I guess that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo, and I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.